All right, thank you. Um, as mentioned, my name is Todd Fauché. I'm the FCC Licensing Technology Manager for Shell Catalyst and Technologies. And today my topic of discussion on is on Shell's proprietary FCC kinetic model called Shark. Shark was developed by Shell over decades of research with um, internal research programs from pilot plant studies to FCC unit operations. Um, it's used extensively throughout the Shell system wherever we have an FCC. It's also licensed outside of Shell to third party customers. Um, Shark can be used for day to day monitoring activities, um, economic evaluations, by unit engineers, um, future feed considerations by the economics and scheduling team, and also uh, can be integrated into the online optimizer through the advanced process control team. We'll discuss these individually throughout the presentation. So this is a cautionary note put together by the Shell legal team. Um, it's, it's quite big and ominous looking. I'm not gonna read everything word by word, but I will summarize it for you. And basically what it says is that you shouldn't make any economic or financial decisions based solely on today's pres presentation. So before I get into talking specifically about Shark, I'd like to take a minute to talk about all the different FCC um, portfolio options we have within Shell Catalyst and Technologies. Of course, you see Shark, our kinetic model, as one of those um, FCC um, programs in, in our portfolio. We also have FCC licensed hardware um, that we offer from the uh, reactor, regenerator, and flue gas section including um, feed nozzles, react, uh, riser internals, um, cyclones on both the reactor and the, and the regenerator side. Um, we also have um, reactor stripping technology. We have um, regenerator air grid technology. We also have spent cat um, inlet distributor technology. And then we have catalyst circulation enhancement technology. And then on the flue gas side, we have uh, third stage and fourth stage separator technology. We also offer a range of um, technical support options for third party customers, including um, diagnosis and troubleshooting um, through technical support agreements. We offer different uh, training opportunities. Um, we have an FCC process process basics course called M1, our M145 cat cracking course that we offer. We offer also offer an operations safety course called STORM. We have a full complement of R&D facilities and an R&D team that works uh, and we do pilot plant testing of feeds and catalyst as well as um, the feed nozzle testing and design and other materials testing as well. And then we have um, CFD modeling capabilities. So this is an outline of today's agenda. So I'll talk a little bit about what Shark is, um, the basis for Shark, uh, its fundamental concepts and who would use Shark. Um, we'll talk about the development history of Shark dating back all the way to the 1940s and the initial kinetics research. We'll talk about how Shark works, um, the different parts and pieces of Shark, the Shark model that take the inputs and produce the outputs. We'll talk a little bit about the uses for Shark um, from unit, uh, unit engineer doing day-to-day -day monitoring to projects evaluations to spot opportunity evaluations, to online optimization uses. Talk a little bit about uh, benefits and features, including the different interfaces that can be utilized within Shark, the different operational modes. Talk about different um, help features within Shark, and of course the different properties, um, feed properties, product property generation capabilities. Then I'll have a, a summary slide and then we'll wrap up with a Q&A session. So what is Shark? Well, 
let's start with the acronym itself. So um, SHARK stands for Shell Advanced Rigorous Cat Cracking Model. Okay, so it's a, uh, it's a model developed by Shell based on decades of R&D research and includes over 50,000 different test runs from pilot plants in FCC um, unit operations. And all of that was done to generate a, a set of uh, proprietary kinetic um, correlations as well as feed characterization correlations. Um, this put into the model that um, ha has different other components to do heat and mass balance um, closures um, produces what is the shark model. That kind of describes shark as the program, but shark as it's used by the individual really comes down to a base case. So a shark base case, what is that? A base case is a representation of your specific FCC model within shark. So it encompasses what kind of hardware you have, what kind of catalyst you're using, and it also encompasses all the different operating conditions, um, feed rates, and, and different types of feed that you utilize within your unit. So on the hardware side and the catalyst side, that information is input directly into, into the shark model itself through um, different uh, hardware components that are available within shark to, to characterize as well as catalyst. The different operating conditions and um, feed rates and, and feed properties are taken through different test runs, which are basically feed and proper property samples that are done and coincident with taking the unit data. So each one of these test runs, and usually for a base case, you would take somewhere in the range of five to 10 different test runs that would span the different kinds of unit operations that you would run, and also the different types of feed and feed rates that you would run. All of that information comprised into a test run is put into a program that we call Data Pump. Data Pump is basically a very advanced Excel spreadsheet that takes the each one of the test runs that you generate and does a check against um, heat and mass balance. And then it normalizes the data, basically meaning it gets it ready for input um, import into Shark and production of the base case itself. So now you have a base case, what do you do with that? So base case is used as your baseline and then you generate weekly or bi-weekly bi test run data to compare against that base case to check unit performance. Beyond doing unit monitoring, um, Shark can be utilized to um, generate base plus delta vectors to be used in the LP model by the economics and scheduling team. And it also can be used to run um, the um, online optimizer for the FCC. Of course, this I've already mentioned, this is used within Shell, but it's also available for license outside of Shell. The history of Shark. So it dates back all the way to the beginnings of um, FCC in the 1940s and 50s when Shell started to initially look um, into FCC kinetics and began an R&D program. Um, in the 1960s, Shell was able to develop the first um, FCC kinetic model. It's the uh, precursor to Shark. It was based mainly on, on gas oil feeds and silica aluminum catalyst. It was, uh, it was very accurate, but it was very slow and cumbersome due to the complexity of the model. In the 1970s, um, Shell was able to expand the um, kinetic FCC kinetic model to cover resid feeds. Um, it also um, was able to um, generate better kinetics through selectivities, um, kinetic selectivities or selectivity ratios. And then it also implemented a feed characterization um, property, which was able to greatly simplify the ability to characterize the feed. It also produced a, a, a faster and easier to run model. In the 1980s, um, the model was further improved and made faster such that it was first implemented within the first um, shell online optimizer. 
In the 1990s, um, another R&D program was developed to get even more data for improved kinetics. And this was really the first release of Shark. And so ever since that first release, Shell has been updating and improving Shark and continues to do so today. In fact, the next release of Shark, which is version 3.5, will be available sometime in 2021. So how does Shark work? Well, um, Shark is made up of a bunch of different uh, sub-models, correlations, and equations um, that takes the inputs from, from the user. These inputs um, can be um, are around the individual feeds that you want to use, the recycles, um, any catalyst and additive data that, uh, that you have if it's different from the base case, any different kind of operating conditions that you want to input into the model. And then it also encompasses any unit constraints that the model has. So this would be around, um, you know, capacities, limitations on such things as the wet gas compressor or the main air blower or, or maybe catalyst circulation rates. So all of these inputs are put into the model. And then the different uh, sub-models, if you will, generate the outputs, which basically the yields, uh, the product properties, and the resultant uh, operations. So the different sub-models include the kinetics or the yield model, of course. Um, this basically generates the different the yields and the and the different selectivities. There's also a, a stripper model, which uh, models the efficiency of the stripper or the hydrogen and coke. There's a heat and carbon balance um, component or model that uh, determines the cat circulation rate as well as the resultant operating conditions for the, both the reactor and regenerator, like the regenerator temperature itself. Um, there's a regenerator model that uh, predicts the fluid gas composition as well as the um, air rate needed to burn the coke. Within the regenerator model, there's a, a further sub-model for the uh, CO boiler, if you're in partial burn. This takes um, the CO um, composition in the flue gas and can predict how much fuel gas you need to combust the CO, as well as predict the amount of steam you generate and the res resultant uh, flue gas composition and operating conditions out of the CO boiler. There's a product property model. So this would uh, basically predict the different liquid properties for um, gasoline and heavier, and typical properties that it predicts are density, viscosity, sulfur content. And for gasoline specifically, it will predict octanes and piona. And then for LCO, it'll predict the cetane. This can be done at uh, standard cut points or at user-defined cut points, giving the model further flexibility. There's also a catalyst deactivation model. So the catalyst deactivation model um, gives a better predictor of ECAT properties such as um, activity based on um, feed composition inputs as, as well as regenerator temperatures and, and CRC. So the logistics of the model, how does it work? Well, so there's, a, there's, there's an interface where the inputs are put in and, there's, and um, outputs are received. So there's three different types of interfaces that we have for Shark. There's your typical normal GUI interface that we have, which is more tabular in nature. And I'll show a picture of, of this interface later on. Um, it's good for entering information on the different uh, components and, and, um, and, and, and executing the model and seeing how it, it, um, it affects, those, um, affects the model. But then there's also a, a flow sheet simulator, which is more along the lines of what a DCS screen or, or a Pro 2 simulation would look like. So this has the capability of um, changing some inputs, executing the model, and seeing the impacts over the full range 
of the of the model, not just the um, screen that you would be looking at on the normal um, interface. Um, the final interface is uh, is an Excel based interface. And this is uh, basically uses the uh, data pump feature that I was uh, discussing before. You can run the full version of Shark within the Excel model. So as I mentioned, you have inputs. Those inputs go into the Shark model. And the Shark model, as I've described before, is a bunch of different sub-models, which has a bunch of correlations and equations in those. Those equations are sent to an equation solver that solves these equations um, simultaneously. And then it spits, uh, it spits back out results and sends it back to whatever um, interface that you happen to be using. Um, this describes how the standalone model works. Of course, I've also mentioned that the, uh, the shark model works with the um, optimizer. So the optimizer would control shark directly, put in inputs, get receive outputs, and be able to um, be able to work the optimizer directly with Shark. Um, also, there's um, outputs from Shark that can be generated to uh, basically give the vectors that can be used in the LP model itself. So what are some of the uses for Shark? So um, Shark has many different uses going from day-to-day -day, um, unit monitoring type uses all the way through specific opportunities evaluations. Looking at the unit monitoring side of things, um, Shark um, is used to basically evaluate the performance of the unit uh, against the base case in order to help the unit engineer um, do early detection on any issues that there might be on hardware or catalyst. Um, these kind of issues on hardware or catalyst are hard to detect by just looking at, at trends lines or, or trends um, such that you might be able to do, say, with um, fluidization issues or with um, slide, slide valve DP issues. And the reason for this is the fact that the product properties and, and um, operating conditions are constantly changing. So you really need a base case that uh, is able to predict these changing conditions and compare how your test run, your specific um, test run is, is performing or how it compares to that base case. You can also use Shark to evaluate new technology. So, or new catalyst. Um, this basically can be used to provide the economic evaluation or, or the case for change, if you will, um, for going to the new technology or catalyst. Um, it can be used for economic evaluations, such as evaluation of purchase feeds or whether or not you want to um, use additives in your FCC unit. Um, this combined with the catalyst deactivation model that I mentioned previously, um, helps to accurately predict the impacts of different feeds or different uh, regenerator conditions on the ECAT, um, ECAT itself. Shark can be used for predicting or seeing what alternate operations will do in predicting the, the, the yield and the resultant um, regenerator operation operating conditions from that. Um, I've already mentioned that uh, the shark can be integrated into other refinery tools, such as the LP model and the optimizer. Um, one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is, um, is shark is a good tool for training, especially for new engineers and for uh, new operators, especially when using the, uh, the, the flow sheet interface. You can um, use that flow sheet interface, change some of the inputs, hit execute and see exactly how the model will react. So it's a very good training tool in that regard. So as far as unit monitoring or troubleshooting is confirmed, uh, concerned, unit monitoring is one of the, the key activities for the unit engineer. 
Um, as I mentioned, it's used for um, early detection of any issues so that corrective action can be, um, can be done as promptly as possible, helping the um, FCC unit and the refinery in general save money and retain margin. Um, this starts with, um, with getting test runs on a weekly or biweekly basis and comparing these um, test run impu inputs against the uh, shark base case. So I've already mentioned that um, you know you really need um, the shark a shark model or FCC kinetic model um, comparison of test run information against a base case to really predict if there's an issue on hardware or catalyst or not. It's not as simple as just looking at at trends. I mentioned that was because of the constantly changing feed properties and operating conditions. So having a good um, kinetic model or base case is essential for this activity. Um, when the unit engineer does his um, weekly or biweekly test run and compares it against the um, base case, if there's complete alignment or, or the, 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 the results match fairly, um, fairly good, then everything's running as it should. Once um, once there starts to be a deviation or a gap between the test run information and the base case information, then the unit engineer knows that uh, something's, uh, something's not quite right and they need to do some further investigation. So at that point, he really doesn't know what's going on. He just knows that something's going on. So within Shark, there's um, different analysis and performance uh, normalization and performance analysis tools using different uh, selectivities and um, hardware efficiencies that help um, to, to narrow down what the issue might be. So once the uh, unit engineer understands the, issue, understands the issue better and is able to narrow it down, he's able to work with the, uh, with, with the operations and other um, unit teams to develop a path forward. If it's on the catalyst side, it could be as simple as increasing catalyst addition rate, or it could be as complex as going through uh, a reformulation evaluation for the catalyst. On the hardware side of things, if you recognize an issue on the hardware, then that's when you uh, are able to identify that issue and, and, and bring it to the attention of the, uh, of, of the unit management team and, and get it on the, on the turnaround planning. Um, so the another thing that uh, you can do with uh, with Shark beyond just um, unit monitoring is you can determine where Shark is operating now versus where it could operate at its full potential, and and this is uh, an evaluation that could be done to make um, a case for change for you know either evaluating new hardware or new catalyst. So um, Shark has within it a, a, a metric called max net conversion. So that evaluates um, the, the, the FCC unit if it were operating at its full potential. That can be compared against the actual net conversion to see how much room to improve that the, um, that the unit might have. And then of course, using Shark, you can tell whether a new base case is needed or not. Um, so beyond just having a gap, like you might see within a potential hardware or catalyst issue, um, when you have a, a base case that needs to be updated, um, you have uh, different responses that uh, will happen between the um, base case, the way the base case responds and the way the test run information responds. Another use for Shark is for evaluating purchase feed opportunities. So Shark has quite a bit of flexibility built into it. Um, you can, um, it has the ability to analyze up to six different feeds, um, ranging anywhere from VGO to Resid to DAO, um, where, and it can be hydro-treated or unhydro-treated feeds. It also can evaluate up to three different recycle streams. Um, LCO, HCO, and slurry oil. 
So with this um, functionality and flexibility, you can have your, your existing feeds um, defined and you can then define a, a new feed um, in, in one of the unused um, feed slots, if you will. Using this, you can evaluate the economics um, uh, and the effect on the units uh, based on yields and operating conditions, as well as um, the catalyst effects. Um, you know, this, uh, this within, within the model, I've already talked about the catalyst deactivation model. Um, you can utilize that to more accurately predict these um, feed opportunities, how they, that will affect the ECAT. So there's two different uh, modes of operation within Shark. There's a simulation mode and there's an optimization mode. So within the simulation mode, if you know exactly what kind of feed you want to run, what, what the rate is, and what the um, operating conditions are that you want to run, you can run that and see what the impact is on the yields and, and the resultant operating conditions. Um, it will use the, within the simulation mode, it will use the cons unit constraints to determine um, whether the, the operation that you've chosen falls within constraints or if it falls outside of the constraints, it'll give you an error message to tell you what, um, uh, what constraint you violated. But there's also another mode of operation called the optimization mode. And this is quite handy within Shark. So within the optimization mode, you get to choose your objective function that you want to maximize. And there's a choice of six of them. And I'll go into more detail later on as far as optimization mode. But basically what you're doing is you're allowing the model to change um, you know, the inputs that you have. So you can, um, um, and, and it runs within the model, within the unit constraints. So it will not violate the unit constraints. So it finds the maximum, um, objective function solution within those um, unit constraints. So within the optimization mode, you have several different choices. You can, um, you can choose to, to vary the feed or not vary the feed. Um, you can um, basically um, you know, look at the feed and, and see what the outcome is and do an economic evaluation based on the outputs and determine whether that feed is something you want to uh, pursue. Another evaluation that you can um, do is um, an evaluation on different operating conditions, alternative operating conditions. So um, same, some similarities to the uh, opportunity feed evaluation. Um, you have the same number of feeds that you can, um, you have to play with. So you have six different feeds, um, you know, ranging from VGO to resid to DAO, hydro treated, unhydro treated. You have the same recycles that uh, you can play with. Um, you have the same different modes of operation. So you can do simulation mode again and see if you know exactly the operate, operation that you want to um, simulate um, and get the, and directly get what the changes are to yields and result in operating conditions. Or you can use the optimization mode to let the model um, vary the inputs and, um, and operate within the the unit constraints to maximize the, op, uh, the objective function that you've chosen. Um, already talked a couple of times about the catalyst deactivation model, but uh, I'll make another plug here. If one of the operation modes that you're considering changing is say regenerator mode, um, this catalyst deactivation model is, is, is very good in taking changes in regenerator temperature changes in CRC and, and accurately predicting the, the um, effect that it will have on the ECAT properties. So some of the shark features and benefits, some of which I've already mentioned a couple of different times. So we've already mentioned that shark can be used for um, for studies and, um, and of course, unit monitoring. It uh, can be fully integrated into other refiner, refinery tools. 
um, you know, one of the things that um, that I haven't mentioned um, yet is that Shark is not just for shell FCCs. Shark can be tuned for any FCC. Has many different uh, useful and flexible features um, that, uh, such as a choice of units of measure, choice of um, standard or user defined cut points. Um, I've already mentioned that the many selections are um, the, the many individual feed streams that you can set up. Um, you have different recycles that you have to choose from. Um, there's also a quench um, selection. You can, you can put in um, posterizer quench if you want to. Shark has the ability to export files from, from one uh, model and then take those exported files and re-import them into another model. So this, uh, this has to do with, say, um, different feeds, economics, test runs, and, and the like. And, and that basically helps so that you don't have to manually input the information in every single time. You can export from one model and import into another model. Shark has the ability to generate uh, different reports. You can generate a report into Excel, a data dump, if you will. Um, you can also generate um, an, an input file for Pro2 so that you can take that input file and it'll directly give you the, uh, the, the reactor effluent and you can use that to run a, a Pro2 simulation. I've already mentioned the different modes of operation, whether that be simulation or optimization modes and some of the different features and advantages of simulation mode and optimization mode. So just to recast um, simulation mode is when you have a specific set of operations you wanna check out. Optimization mode is when you want the model to choose um, the inputs um, and find a solution based on maximizing the objective function that you, that you have chosen and stay within the constraints. Another nice feature of, of Shark is that um, you run the model you can run it and, um, and, and, and compare a single um, test run against the base case, or you can run a bunch of different uh, test runs at a single time, uh, up to 15 different uh, cases and compare those. I mentioned some of the built-in correlations and, estimate, and um, estimating features for feed and product properties. Um, there's also, um, uh, the catalyst deactivation model that I've, I've mentioned. And then of course, the different user interfaces that I've discussed before, as far as, um, you know, being able to um, utilize either the um, normal interface or the flow sheet interface or the Excel interface. And then of course, um, the improved profitability, which has been demonstrated within the shell system for a properly tuned uh, base case model. So for a properly tuned base case model, Shell has been able to demonstrate that uh, you receive a benefit of anywhere from 10 to 50 cents um, per, per barrel. So uh, talk a little bit more in detail about the feed property generator. So uh, the feed property generator is extremely important uh, to, to get good feed characterization. Um, basically, you're able to generate from a, a select amount of feed data that you have, you're able to generate um, more feed information, more feed properties that, uh, that allow you to, to fully characterize the feed because the more information you have about the feed, the better and more accurate uh, prediction you're going to have. So Shell has some, some minimum inputs as far as feed is concerned. Um, you have to have the distillation, density of some sort. Um, you have to have uh, feed coke that can come in the form of uh, a CCR, MCR, or even an uh, uh, NBC. Um, uh, you have to have sulfur and nitrogen content in the feed, different metals and a viscosity. So that's kind of the, ben the, the minimum information that's needed. And from that, uh, Shark can generate 
um, much more information, including but not limited to, so the UOPK value, um, molecular weight, aromatics, and so forth. Um, this can be, this property, feed property generator can be applied to um, each of the six different feeds um, individually. So um, it's, 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 it's applied to the, the different feeds one at a time. Um, it also can be applied to the different types of feeds that I mentioned before. So it, it will generate different properties based on the type of feed that you have, whether that be a VGO feed, resid feed, or a DAO feed, um, hydrotreated or unhydrotreated. Um, these properties, once they're generated and, and put into the, the model, um, you have the ability to export those properties to, to a feed input file and then import that property, import those feed properties to another, um, to another shark model. So that's very beneficial, again, saving you time having to um, manually input stuff. So we've talked a little bit about uh, you know the different modes of operation. I mentioned simulation mode and optimization mode. So again, um, simulation mode is um, you know it's it's to see the um, the impacts of a specific set of changes you want to make um, within the model, whether those impacts are on feed or operating conditions or whatever, and see how those impact the yields and the result in operating conditions. Um, you have up to six different feeds to, and three different recycles to apply these changes to. Um, you have a bunch of different choices on how you want to um, uh, reconcile the heat balance. So for instance, you could choose to specify the coke make and the air rate, or if you um, weren't sure about one of those, you could choose to specify the preheat temperature or this and and the CO content or the O2 content, depending on what kind of regeneration mode you're in. Um, you could um, also look at uh, you know constraints. It uses the constraints, but it doesn't uh, force the solution to fall within the constraints. So, but it will give you a message if you do violate the constraints. Um, if you do happen to um, so try and solve a, a uh, or find a solution that's not solvable, it's an infeasible solution. Uh, the model will give you an error message on that too, but it'll return to the, the last feasible solution. So you're, you're, not, um, um, you're not stuck with an infeasible solution. Um, again, you can use uh, simulation mode to compare uh, a single test run against the base case, or you can uh, you can use use it to do multiple cases at a time, run them simultaneously, and compare them, which is sometimes very beneficial. Optimization mode. Um, of course, it, uh, it has some similarities to simulation mode in the sense that uh, you have the choice of all the different uh, feedstocks that you can use, as well as the different, uh, the different recycles. Um, but the optimization mode itself, the essence of it is you want to let, you want to choose an objective function and uh, there's different uh, objective functions for which you can choose. Um, uh, there's six different ones you can choose from, ranging from maximizing profits to maximizing conversion, maximizing gasoline, maximizing LPG, maximizing LCO, and maximizing um, octane. So you choose one of those, um, those objective functions. Then you can also, um, Unlike simulation mode, you can choose to vary the, the different feeds if you want to, as well as other um, input conditions to, to maximize the objective function. So, um, so optimization mode has some, some key benefits to it for evaluation of different opportunities, um, you know, whether that uh, be an, an economic opportunity or a, a yield type of opportunity to see how the, um, see how the unit operates within the constraints, but uh, see, how, see how the yields uh, fall out as well as the result in operating conditions. 
Okay, just to uh, summarize here, talked about um, talked about shark um, being it's what it is. It's uh, it's Shell's proprietary FCC kinetic model. Um, it can be used to to tune um, any model to fit any um, FCC model, not just a Shell model. Um, it's it's comprised of a bunch of different submodels um, and correlations uh, um, and equations such as a stripper, regenerator model, catalyst deactivation model, CO boiler model, just to name a few. Um, it's based on a lot of research that uh, dates all the way back to the, uh, to the 1940s and the original kinetics um, R&D work that Shell did, um, but it's been progressed along the way. It's consistently updated um, through an ongoing R&D program that we have here at Shell. And this really helps to drive the accuracy and the confidence in the results that the shark model has. Um, shark um, as a base case um, is, um, can be used for um, basically setting up a base case, can, can be used for um, you know, monitoring and a lot of different things, but setting up the, day, the, the base case, getting the test runs to do that over a a range of different operating conditions and feed, uh, feed rates and feed conditions gives the base case model a robustness and a flexibility and an accuracy level that really um, sets uh, Shark apart. Has lots of built-in features. Um, some of the ones that I've mentioned previously are the different interfaces that it has, the different uh, property generators, feed property, product property, generation capability, the ability to simulate a direct result or optimize within a, a chosen objective function to find a solution, um, the different import and, and export uh, capabilities as, as well as report generation capabilities so that you can use the, the output uh, um, directly into a Pro 2 simulation. Um, the ease of use of Shark, so the different interfaces that it has, um, especially the, um, the, the graphic interface or the, or the flow sheet interface um, can be used for Shark training for new engineers. And it integrates into the other refinery tools, such as um, the LP model and the online optimizer. Um, and, and and the uses itself I already mentioned the unit monitoring, but it uh, can be used for economic evaluations for feeds and catalysts and different project evaluations, basically uh, providing you with the case for change. Um, mentioned that uh, Shark has a demonstrated profitability for a properly tuned base case of anywhere from 10 to 50 cents a barrel. And then of course, um, the last piece is that uh, Shark is, uh, is a Shell program, but uh, we license it outside of Shell. So that's all I have. Thank you for your time.